Hello everyone and welcome to The Dev Show. Today we're going to talk about getting started with React and using Code Sandbox to experiment and have a really safe environment while developing. Um, I'll show you some of the developer tools that are available and some of the ways to customize your setup uh, so that you can get up and running and learning React in no time. Uh, but there are a couple other uh, front-end frameworks for the web that you can be using. Um, one of them being Ember.js, another one being Angular, and now here we have React. Um, out of all three of them, um, I have experience in Ember.js, have only gone through the tutorials of Angular, and I've also done a little bit of React, so I'd like to show you React today. Uh, I think it's a really great way to just get started in web development when you're not really sure where to start. You can go on the W3Schools website, you'll see some HTML snippets, you'll see some CSS. Um, so the way we're gonna do it today is we're actually jumping straight to the third part of front-end web development, which is JavaScript. Um, and it's if you've ever done programming with other frameworks, like back-end frameworks for the web, or maybe you've done mobile development, this is gonna be one of the easiest ways for you to get started. And in this case, we're gonna be taking a look at some of the basics of just getting React set up um, in Code Sandbox. So if you want to take a look at any of the documentation for React, it's on reactjs.org. And then I'm going to code sandbox.io. Um, I've already signed in with my GitHub account so that you can save some of your preferences. Uh, and one of the things that I've made so far was just a hello world sandbox. Um, I'm going to open that one up. But if you wanted to get started on your own, you can do create React sandbox. So this particular setup that we have, um, we don't have too much set up for us other than just React itself. So if you take a look on the left-hand side, we have our files and folders set up for the project. So if you were going to be looking at adding new files or taking in some files you already have in JavaScript and moving them in, um, this would be the area to do it would be inside of source. Um, so there are a couple things that are required when setting up your React app. And one of them is this public folder and the source folder. In the source folder, you need this index.js file. And in the public folder, you need the index.html file. And the way that these two things work together is that inside the index.js, you have a render that's happening. And the render happens to um, a element by ID. And that element right now is set to root so that's why we see our example up and running currently. But if I was to go in here and just take a look at what the project has uh, set up for us, um, I have this right here, the root, right? So this root, if I change this to say Ricky and save, uh, we actually won't get anything rendered in our React app and we even have uh, some helpful tips about how to correct this. So the tip it's telling us right now is that uh, the target container is not a DOM element. So in this case, it's not finding document.get element by ID to be the root. So these two things have to line up. So as soon as I put this back in, root, there we go. Um, another thing you could do here too while you're just trying things out is you could do like an emoji in here. There we go, and put it in here, save the two, and now we're working again. Um, so this code sandbox is actually really nice because it's got that basic structure set up for you. Um, I also have some additional dependencies that I got from online, and uh, the package.json is where it gets those from. So the package.json, the only things that I had just set up automatically in a regular React app would have been like React, React DOM, and then React Scripts. And currently right now, I'm using some components that IBM uh, actually is, uh, is kind enough to lend to the world, which is uh, Carbon. So if you want to take a look at uh, Carbon React Components and just Google it online, and you'll find right here hosted by IBM, Carbon React Components. 
Um, and then just to give you an idea of how it works, there's actually um, the edit in code sandbox here. So that's what I did to get this project up and running. Um, it's currently called Hello World, and that's kind of the de facto of what we usually start with, with uh, uh, development, software development. And in this case, um, I have just a basic structure of React, and I, I just want to start this off from scratch, and we'll explain each part as we go through. So with our particular React setup, um, we actually don't need a lot of this other stuff here. I'm, I'm going to leave it up to you to decide whether you want to edit this file or not, but we don't necessarily need any more than what's set up here for, for today's show. Uh, the first thing we need to do when creating any React file is actually import React. Boom, it is done. Uh, notice the editor also gives you a little help here. It's like a little green squig squiggly underneath the uh, beginning of this variable here called React. Um, and that's just basically telling us that, hey, we didn't use it. Um, if I was to then do the part where we render something to the DOM, I could do something like uh, making a React class with React.component and using other different things that are very core to just React and how React works. But since we're actually using the web part of React, we're actually going to use React DOM. And if you don't know what DOM is, uh, it's actually a, uh, a thing for the front end web. It's called uh, Document Object Manager. A great way to learn about these and a bunch of other stuff is actually MDM. So if you take a look at the developer website for Mozilla, uh, they have a lot of different information about uh, web development, everything from JavaScript to um, what an array uh, is and maybe how to iterate through it or how to declare a variable. There's all sorts of stuff on here, and it's a spectacular website full of information and knowledge. Uh, sometimes at the end of some of the articles and some of the document references, they'll even tell you what's compatible with all the different major web browsers that are available online. Um, so with this, I actually want to take a look at what a document object model is. Um, and essentially, as you can see it listed here, it's a programming interface for HTML and XML documents. And uh, a Apart from this, we're going to be only using a little bit of this, and then React kind of takes care of manipulating this behind the scenes. One of the things to know about React is that it abstracts the DOM, and they call it a virtual DOM. And what we're doing with React DOM is we're making these updates and elements, and some of our components are being uh, rendered. And when it's being rendered, it's actually being first done in a virtual DOM, and whatever changes need to be updated to the actual DOM are first figured out in memory with the React virtual DOM, and then it's actually pushed to the DOM. And that is to help with uh, the efficient um, compute time to actually calculate what are the differences. Uh, if you've ever used a web uh, library such as jQuery, um, any of the things that you're doing uh, in code, like say, changing the inner text of HTML, every single line that gets run with that, it's doing a DOM update. So if you iterated through a bunch of um, elements in your HTML, updated some of the text inside there, or injected more HTML in there, uh, you'll actually find that those are calls directly to the DOM to update those. And they can become quite inefficient. And that's why React steps in and makes this a little bit faster for the web browser. Uh, but then it also makes a, a really great development environment so that you can get things up and running very quickly. So I encourage you to take a little bit more look at this just so you can get familiar with what it is. Um, we won't have to dive into a lot of this stuff. It's already taken care of um, in the React framework. So here we have only the two uh, import statements that are done so far. And really just to get started, just do react dom.render. Notice we have some autocomplete here helping us out and what it's going to look like. Um, so I'm actually very familiar with this API. And I just need some sort of HTML element to add in here. And then some place to put that HTML element. 
Notice on the right-hand side it says that uh, the React DOM dot render had an issue, line four, and it says the target container is not a DOM element. So it notices that there's actually nothing written as the second argument. So what I'm going to do is use document, which is from the web API, get element by ID. And I know from our HTML file that we are lining up with root. Oh, spelled it wrong. Root. There we go. And I'm good. Good to go. Now, the only thing that we're not seeing here is that uh, some of the things that I'm typing, the code sandbox is actually trying to help you reformat the code so that it looks neater or cleaner. Um, you can go ahead and adjust some of those preferences if you want. Um, you'll notice as I'm starting to type, things will translate into something different. I think it's great to learn just to see what else is valid and what can actually work. Um, so there's some intelligent uh, operation going on when you're typing to make these things correct or to make them maybe more succinct. So in this case, I'm actually going to just do an H1 element, and I'm just going to say hello world. And close that h1 element here. There we go. Um, now it should get re-rendered and put into our React app. Maybe uh, click this. There. All right, cool. Let's make this go over there. All right. Let's change this back to an h1. Awesome. Hello from the app components. We already have some styles in there, so this is not typically what you'd see in your web browser, uh, but that's pretty cool, something we can work with. Um, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up into something of like a parent element. Div. Oh. Close the div. Close the div. There we go. Great. All right. Um, so this lets us put in multiple pieces of content. Notice this looks a lot like just regular HTML. This is my paragraph. Cool. All right, so this is my paragraph. Um, I don't know, let's see, let's do another thing. In H2, this is the second heading. I don't know, will emojis break this again? Let's see. H2, boom. All right, cool. So that's my second heading. Um, and there's a whole bunch more that we can go ahead and experiment with, but these are some of the um, like regular HTML elements. These are actually also React elements here too. Uh, just to give you an idea of some of the things that you might do with it is you might put a style on it. Um, so you do is like style equals and then you actually put it in these here. So normally you just do like a string of this, right? And then you can say color is red, like that. Now that's actually not going to work here in the React world. Uh, what's actually going to work here is we're going to put in some of the color through styling maybe in CSS. I just want to give you a little taste though of how this is different than HTML. So HTML directly, this would work. Uh, right now, though, in our JavaScript, this is actually something that will not work because we have a, a very simple syntax for adding in these React component and JavaScript values. For example, um, let's make this a function. Okay, and we'll return this here. There we go. All right. Um, so with this, this is kind of like our function setup. Um, just to give you an idea, do console.log. This is Ricky. Then look at the log down here. Shows Ricky because it got rendered, right? Uh, but I can do a couple of other things like uh, declare the color. So color equals, I can say red. Okay. Um, now I put color in here. How could I do that? Well, if you know anything about ES6 modules, you might think, oh, I could do a, um, a template string. Template strings are cool. And I put it in here, do something like this, and then do a 
color, right? Yeah, see, notice like all these little attempts were breaking a bunch of stuff on the right-hand side. It's saying there's a syntax error. So this is, this is normally how maybe you do JavaScript, uh, or I'm sorry, this is normally how you would do like an HTML um, markup uh, syntax, but we don't have that here, but this is React, so we have to treat this a little bit differently. Uh, but what we do have are these things here, which are these wing braces, and then we can start doing things. Now, if we want to pass in an object, which this wants, it's going to be an object literal. And um, we'll do something like this. Okay. Now the color goes in. Uh, we can even use our handy dandy destructuring like so. And now the color is red, but let's change this to blue. There it is, blue. Uh, let's do a light gray. Best color on the planet, gray. Um, now let's do an orange. Cool. And I think another one is uh, RGB. Let's do zero, two, and a zero. No, 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 not a two. Yeah, a two. Let's do a two. Let's see what happens. Anything? No. Okay. Maybe over this. Uh, something like that. Uh, point seven. Does that work? Nope. And I don't have anything in the console telling us something's broken. Uh, but I bet if we were using our dev tools, we would see something there that's not necessarily working as expected. Uh, but I'm going to take this out. That is not how we're going to style things. But that's just an idea of some of the different stuff that you can do with these different React components. So these are some of the built-in ones that React gives you. So you got the H1, you got the P tag, making your divs, you got the H2 here. Um, so really cool stuff that you can work on. Uh, I'm actually going to take some of this out. And uh, let's see, take this out here. Cheddar? No, no. Cheddar's barking at something. All right, so I would say welcome to the website. Welcome to the website. And this is our first React app that we are creating. Okay. Now here's the thing. After a while, this particular app is going to get a little bit bigger. Um, so we're going to need to see some of those things that uh, were on the left hand side, the different files, and figure out where we're going to put this so that we can put it into our website. Um, and this will help us stay organized. We'll call this a component. We'll call this um, the uh, welcome component. So on here on the left hand side, let's see, file editor, let's go here. Let's do a, uh, a new file, do welcome.js, okay, move it inside a source, there we go. Uh, again, first thing we do, import React from React, great. Uh, nothing else here to do except now we have slightly different syntax we're going to go with here. Um, if we want this to be exposed outside this file and reused, we do an export default, and then we do a function like so, and we'll return some something here. And for now, we'll just write something in here from the welcome. Welcome component, component, component. Boom. All right, cool. There we go. One liner. Put it in here. I'm going to take this. I'm going to do a command. Looks like a command slash to get that commented out. Okay. And uh, replace this with our welcome. And we'll look at that. Ah, it's broken. 
This here is telling us that there is a reference error, a new kind of error. The reference error is saying welcome is not defined. Now, if you take a look in the editor, yeah, it's got the squiggle. But the thing that really counts here is that we're not necessarily referencing welcome from anywhere. It's, it's not in scope. Uh, it's not declared anywhere. Uh, notice React here, this is not something that looks like it's being used, but it's needed for this file. Uh, the thing that we are using, though, is render. That's over here. So if we want to use welcome, we're going to have to import that. So import welcome from, and then we use this syntax, dot slash. Notice there's the autocomplete. Thank you, Code Sandbox. And there we go. From the welcome component. Now we're going to take these items here and put this in the welcome component. Boom, boom, boom. Oh, and uh, let's not do that. And get this like this. Save it. Boom. Here we go. We have a welcome to the website. This is our first React app we are creating. We go back to here and we're good to go. So that covers it for most of the part of just getting used to the structure of the React app. Hope you can see that this index.js file is really where things just like start. It's kind of like the center of the app starting. Um, and, and then everything from there breaks out into another component and then into another component. Um, something that we might want to do in general uh, is take a look at this type of setup and expand upon it. So thanks for watching the show today. We'll add more to this app in a future episode, so stay tuned.